pocketbook mystery. Now, in the quiet hours of the night, the lamplit library waits. The book lies open on the table. And out of the book, all things are possible. Love and hate and adventure. Greed and infinite terror. And mystery. Now is the moment of escape for imagination. The instant of release into the other world where anything can happen. Now the book lies open on the table. Tonight, the book is The Circular Staircase by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Miss Reinhardt. Yes? Who was led down the circular staircase? One man with two minds. One crazed by fear, the other steeled by terror. One desperate, the other tortured. One man with two minds in tonight's story... The Circular Staircase. The Pocketbook Mysteries, a new cycle of plays based on the 2,000 volumes of the Pocketbook Library. A dramatic cycle of suspense, action, and mystery, taken from the writings of Hemingway, of Reinhardt, of Dostoevsky, of James Kane, William Irish, Dashiell Hammett, of all the great storytellers who write for the readers of Pocket Books. Miss Reinhardt, are you ready? I'm ready. Miss Mary Roberts Reinhardt, beginning the story which she calls The Circular Staircase. winding circular staircase, their steps ringing dull on the iron coil rung. The two white jacketed attendants hold his arm. The detective walks in front. They go down the staircase, down the chlorine smelling corridor. They enter the office where the black lettering reads, Dr. Corman. They stand there waiting. The doctor looks up from his desk, nods briefly. The detective leaves the office, the attendant follows. He is alone now with the doctor. Your name? Martin. Where are you? Where are you? City, prison, psych. Oh, doctor, why do we have to do this every time, every single time? Where are you? City prison. Psychiatric war. You know who you are? You know where you are? Yes, sir. Doc, you got to do something for me quickly. You've got to. I'm going mad. I know it. I know it. I'm going to do something for you, Martin, when you told me the whole truth. I, I, I can't talk about it. I told you a hundred times. I don't care to talk about it. Martin. Yes? There's a drug we have of sodium derivatives. When the drug is administered, it permits the subconscious mind to speak freely. You've probably heard of it. No, sir. Something is buried in your subconscious. Something so deep, so terrible, that your conscious mind refuses to face it. But once that something is out in the open... Would it... Would I be cured, Doctor? You can try. You can only try. Shall I use the drug? I... Up to you. It's harmless. You've lost nothing if it fails. I... Yes, yes, yes. Use it. Use it. Anything. Anything that will give me a minute. Please. Lie down here on the couch. Pull up your sleep. This won't hurt. Oh. That's all. Now, Martin, the drug is taking effect. I want you to begin counting backwards from 100. What? Count backwards. 100, 99, 
Keep counting, Martin. 72, 71, 72, 73, no, no, 71, 70, 69. All right, Martin. We're ready to talk. Why did the detective arrest you, Martin? Why? Why did the detective arrest you? I went crazy in the hotel room. I pounded on the walls. I broke the furniture. I screamed out the window. Why did you go crazy, Martin? She came there to the hotel room. Helen came to the room. She was dead. I saw her die. But she came to the hotel room and talked at me. She's dead, but she talked at me. Tell me just how it happened, Martin. It wasn't the first time. She followed me everywhere. Tell me just how it happened, Martin. From the first time. First time it happened, I was in a restaurant with Judy. Sweet, lovable Judy. We had a corner table near the bar. Soft, secluded, low light. I held Judy's hand and we talked wonderful nonsense. Judy, we'll be married. Live near a wide, lazy river. We're married. We've just become engaged. Oh, we love each other. Why should we wait? Oh, so I can get to know you better. You know me. I'm Martin. I came from a dark, horrible place where people hated each other. And I came into a light place where I found you. Martin. You will marry me right away, won't you, Judy? I'll... What's the matter, Martin? What's the matter? That woman sitting at the bar. Huh? That woman. That's Helen. Huh? Helen. It's Helen, but it can't be. It can't be. What are you talking about? Helen, she's come back to life again. She's dead, but she's come back to life. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You'll have to be quiet. Helen. Helen, wait. I'll have to ask you to leave. She's gone. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. Helen. 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 Martin. Yes, sir. Who is Helen? Helen is dead. Who is Helen? Helen was my wife. She's dead. How did she die? She died and came back to life. I saw her. How did she die, Martin? I don't know. You know. How did she die? I don't know. She was your wife. You must know. I hated her. She nagged. I hated her. Helen? Yes, Martin. Uh, I finished another story. You want to hear it? Oh, you and your story. It's about the 50th you've written, not one soul. Why don't you get an honest job so we can eat? Oh, this one's a little different. I thought you might like it. Well, you thought wrong. I don't want to hear any of your stories. You understand? Not a single one. All right, you don't have to. You need a watchman at the foundry, and you write stories. Isn't it about time you did some work? Helen, now you know Other women have decent clothes. Other women go out once in a while. Other women enjoy life. But me, oh no. I stay home, I slave in a hot kitchen and grow old before my time. I sit and listen to your stupid story. Please, Helen, let's not have another argument. Oh, and please, let's not have another argument. I suppose you'd rather be out with those lovely friends of yours swapping whiskey down your throat. I suppose you'd rather be listening to them telling you how wonderful you are, how wonderful that junk you turn out is. Helen, I've warned you never to talk about my writing. Writing, you good. You call that stuff Helen. writing? Don't tell on me. You and your phony sniveling. You've lost every job you had because you thought decent work was beneath you. Helen, I, I've taken just about enough. Oh, you have. That's all I'm going to. I'm clearing out of here. 
Your what? Uh, the furniture's yours. You can make the last few payments. Oh, I can, can I? Maybe you'll leave some of your precious stories to pay them with. And the grocer, and the clothes. Ellen, I'm and through that... talking. I'm leaving you, and I want a divorce. Divorce? You want a divorce? Well, that's the funniest thing I ever heard. I want a divorce. Oh, you do. I suppose you'll find somebody new. And tell her what a great writer you are. Tell her how she'd live like a queen from your magnificent creative talent. Ellen, when you talk like that, I... You wanted a boy. Oh, you're funny, Martin. Really funny. You wanted a boy. I'm the one who wants a divorce. I'm the one. And you'll pay for it, Martin. You'll pay plenty. <laughs> Martin. Yes, Doctor. How did your wife die? We, we were divorced. I don't know. You know. I left her. The days passed. I don't know. How did she die? You know. She, she died. She came alive again. How did she die? Uh, <laughs> no one will ever know. It was too clever. Much too clever for anyone to ever know. She said I had no creative talent. Didn't you, Helen? Ellen, I'm speaking to you. Oh, stop it, Martin. You've been drinking. Huh? Only two. A little celebration. Now, tonight's the an anniversary. Tonight, we're divorced six months. Tonight, we're six months apart. Stop it, Martin, and listen. I only asked you here because the alimony is overdue again. I've got to have money for the rent. Oh. Is this the Helen I knew asking for money? How can you lower yourself to such a level, my dear? Martin, this isn't time for one of your things. The landlord's been in to see me twice. Oh, my heart, please. This is the fourth time I've had to be late with a rent. I promised to pay him by morning. Oh, did he? I can't go on like this much longer. I'm getting sick. You don't seem to understand. I haven't any money. And you don't seem to understand that I don't care. Well, you've got to care. The money's due me. I want it. You'll get it when it's good and ready. Martin, you can't do this. Uh, we'll see whether I can. Martin, I'm sick. Don't you understand? I can't take it. Now we'll see who pays. Martin! Now we'll see who pays. We'll see. We'll see. Go on, Martin. What? Helen paid. Didn't she? Yes. Yeah. Helen. How, Martin? It was Helen. Helen paid. How? And in a way she never dreamed possible. I'd be broke when she was hungry. Unavailable when she was sick. Out of town when she was desperate. I let her dangle to the end of a rope. Martin, I'm seriously ill. I owe everyone a problem. Now, I've had all I'm going to take from you. I'm putting a stop to it. Oh, really? You've been selling your story. You have money now. I've got to have my share. And if I don't have it first thing in the morning, you'll be in court this time tomorrow night. Sweetly said, my dear. But believe me, we shall never meet in court. Tonight we leave each other with an even greater finality than before. We'll see about that. <laughs> That's right, we will. Tonight, my dear Helen... Tonight, you're going to commit suicide. Oh, Martin, you're drunk. <laughs> Am I? You think you can frighten me? You're going to commit suicide, Helen. That's why I suggested we come here to the kitchen. You're talking like a fool. Uh, you think so? I assure you, I've planned this for months. If this is another one of your jokes. For months. It was easy to see the divorce would never be enough to rid me of you. I asked myself over and over, how can I get rid of Helen without being hung for it? How can I get rid of it? Martin. I tell you, it was quite a problem until I came across this object in the store. You know what this object is? Oh, gas mask. Yeah, I guess. An army all-purpose gas mask with red canister. Excludes carbon monoxide, Helen. <laughs> Excludes kitchen gas. <laughs> now, don't try to run, dear. The house is thoroughly locked. We'll try the radio should you attempt to scream. Martin! We'll look exactly like suicide. There'll be no mark of violence. I'll put on the mask and open the gas chamber. 
I'll hold your head above the jets while I breathe oxygen within the mask. You'll become unconscious. Your body will slump to the floor. No mark of violence. Exactly like suicide. And you'll be out of my life forever. Can't? You can't possibly mean... Oh, but I can, my dear. I do. Martin! Darling, I... Well, now it's Martin, darling. Well, we can talk to sober Martin, can't we? Don't put that hideous thing on your face, Martin! That's a pleasant suicide. Now, come, Harold. Martin, you don't mean this. You're joking. That's it. This is, this is one of your jokes. It's a wonderful joke. You can stop now. I almost fell for it. Martin! Come, Harold. Martin, listen, don't... You, you can keep the alimony. I don't want it. Martin, please. I, I was always good to you, my son. I always took care of you. Remember, remember when, we, when we were married and our honeymoon, what fun we had? Remember, don't. Listen to me, you can't do it. You can't. You can't. You can't. Come you can't. Up. No, no. Please, Mom, please. And your lovely head held above the gas jet. Radio tuned to cover any screams. Martin, please. Ah, yes, please. And on, now the final step. Martin, Martin, no. And you'll be unconscious. Twenty and you'll be dead. Tomorrow I'll find you. No marks. A suicide. Your ex-husband far away on a pleasant fishing trip. No one suspects. Breathe, dear. Breathe gently. Sleep. Do you promise to love, honor, and obey this woman till death do you part? I do. Till death do us part. Helen? Helen? Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Forever. with Act Two of The Circular Staircase, here is Len Sterling. Can you help it if millions of human beings die for want of food? Throughout liberated Europe and Asia today, in the grim aftermath of total war, millions of people are homeless and starving. And millions will die of starvation if you cannot help them. But you can. We are dedicated in the cause of liberty and justice to do what we can to help them in their time of suffering. Yes, you can help them. You can reduce your use of wheat and rice products, fats and oils. Eliminate all food waste. Turn in all used fats. Keep your victory garden producing. Your help can mean the difference between starvation and life for millions. The campaign to share a meal and save a life has begun in communities throughout the nation. The success of the campaign depends upon your cooperation. Share a meal and save a life. <laughs> Now, once again, the quiet hour of the night. The lamplit library waits. The book lies open on the table. The Circular Staircase by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Continue, Miss Reinhardt. They lead him down the winding steel band of the circular staircase, down the chlorine-smelling corridor to the doctor's office. They open the door of the office, and he stands there a moment, uncertainly. Then, slowly, deliberately, he goes to the leather couch, lies down on the couch, and rolls up his sleeve. They close the door, and he is alone with the doctor. Martin? Yes, sir. You want to continue with the treatment? Yes. You do this voluntarily, without coercion. That's understood. Yes, doctor. 
Very well. Hold your sleeve a little higher. Doctor. Yes? I slept better last night. Hold your sleeve higher, Martin. Yes. Oh. Begin counting, Martin. Ninety-nine. Ninety-eight. Ninety-seven. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. body slumped to the floor. I waited till she was wonderfully dead. What did you do then? I walked out of a house. I buried the gas mask. I was a free man. Go on, Martin. I was rid of her. I was really free. I moved to another city. I forgot she ever existed. In a year, my stories were selling. My life was beginning again. In a year, I met Judy. In one year, I was reborn to a new world. So perfect for you. It's like being born all over again. Is it, Martin? Ah, uh-huh. it's like there was nothing before. Only Judy and Martin. Martin and Judy. <laughs> Jelly. I mean it. Jelly. We'll go on like this for always. We'll be the two happiest people ever. We'll be married and live near a wide, lazy river. Married? Well, we've just become engaged. Oh, well, we love each other. Why should we wait? I can get to know you better. You know me. I'm Martin. I came from a dark, horrible place where people hated each other. And I came into a light place where I found Judy. Martin. You will marry me right away, won't you, Judy? I'll... What's the matter, Martin? What's the matter? That woman sitting at the bar. What? That woman. That's Helen. What? Helen... That's Helen, but it can't be. It can't be. Martin, what are you talking about? Helen, she's come back to life again. She's dead, but she's come back to life. Stop it. Stop it. Sir, you'll have to be quiet. Helen, wait. Sir, I'll have to ask you. Oh, she's gone. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. Helen! 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 Helen came back. Helen came back to life. How? I don't know. How did Helen come back to life? I don't know. I killed her, but she came back to life. I saw her. How did she come back? I, I don't know. I don't know, but she came back. I saw her in the restaurant. She was there. Martin, she wasn't. Judy, I tell you that was Helen in the restaurant. I tell you that was Helen. Martin, Martin darling, look at me. We're both grown up. We both know Helen committed suicide over a year ago. I don't know who you saw tonight, but it wasn't Helen. It was her way of dressing, her way of holding a drink. Even that, that terrible smile of hers was the same. Martin. Yes, Judy. You've been working too hard lately. I, I know. Imagination but... plays funny tricks in a tired mind, darling. Maybe. Maybe you're right. You need a vacation, Martin. Maybe. Darling. Come here. You love me? Oh, Judy. You think we could make that vacation a honeymoon? Judy. Could we, Martin? Judy, you mean it? You, you really mean it? I mean it, Martin. Oh, baby, baby. Look, no more of this talk about Helen. No, no, no. No more, Helen. Promise. Promise, promise, promise. You'll never from this day on hear Helen's name again. <laughs> Martin. 
Yes, Doctor. You promised never to say Helen's name again. I kept my promise. And after a while, I forgot about Helen in the wonderful days with Judy. We planned our wedding and a beautiful, never-ending honeymoon. You married Judy? I married Judy on the first day of May. Then, Martin? Then we went on the honeymoon. I was the happiest man in all the world. Happiest man in the world. How do you do, happiest man? <laughs> I do just fine, and you? The happiest girl. No, oh, Judy, Judy, Judy. All right, darling. This is forever, isn't it? Forever and ever. Let's drive on and on for a hundred years, shall we? Okay. We can grow old and gray together, and you'll always be beautiful. And you'll always be handsome. Judy, I'm going to kiss you. Hi. Hey, wait. Two hands on the wheel, mister. The gates are down at the railroad cross. Oh, good. We'll have to wait for the train. Thanks, Railroad, for allowing the groom to kiss the bride. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. Hey, can't you come a little closer, Brad? I'm positively crushing you, it? Oh, you're not. You're... What is it, Martin? Look. In that car over there. The other side of the court thing, that woman in the car. What woman? That woman. Don't you see her? That's Helen. No, Martin, no. That's Helen, I tell you, that's Helen. Stop it, darling, stop it. I'll kill you, Helen. I'll kill you. I'll get you this time. I'll get you this time for good. Go on, Martin. We escaped with our lives somehow. But after that, there was no life for Judy and me. I kept seeing Helen everywhere. Where, Martin? Everywhere. We'd go to a movie. There she was coming up the aisle. We'd go to a new restaurant. There she was at a table just out of reach. We moved to another city, but it was always the same. I'd see her in a car passing by. I'd see her when I walked down the street. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. Judy, she was in this room. Martin, Martin. I tell you, she was in this room. Turn on the light, Judy. She was here, all right. Martin. Yeah. I've had enough of this. I'm going to leave you. She was over there by the door. Martin, listen to me. She wore that awful green dress that I hate, that sickly green. Martin. Yeah? I said I'm going to leave you. This time for good. What? No. No, you, you can't do that, Judy. Judy, where are you going? I'm going to get my suitcase in the hall. No, no. Oh, you can't leave me. You can't. I'm sorry. Really, I am. No, no, Judy, you don't understand. I can't be alone. That's just what she wants, to get me alone. Oh, Martha. You see what I mean? She's just waiting till I'm all by myself. She's right out there waiting. I feel like I wish I could. Look, look, Judy. If you must go, all right. But, but not now. Wait till morning. Huh, Judy? But don't, don't leave me here at night. Wait till morning. No, no, Mom. Judy, Judy, don't please. Just wait till morning. Don't leave me, Judy. Don't leave me. <coughs> don't leave me, Judy. Judy, Judy, don't leave me, just outside waiting for me. I lay in bed trembling. And I couldn't stand it anymore. Go on, Martin. I got out of bed and dressed. I ran to the dining room and poured myself a drink. And then another. And another. And suddenly I knew what I had to do. I had to get out in the street. Be with people. Lose myself in the crowd. Yes, Martin. I ran from the house. I ran along the streets. But there were no crowds. No one was in the streets. I ran and ran, hoping to find someone, anyone. But there was nothing. Not even the sound of traffic. I stood still in the emptiness. Panting. Sweat pouring out of me. And then... 
and I heard one sound. Footsteps. Ellen's footsteps following me down the street. I turned to look, but there was no one behind me, nothing. Except those footsteps coming closer and closer. Ellen. Is that you? Ellen. Ellen? Is that you? Ellen? Oh, come on, if it's you, Helen. Come on, show yourself. Come on, I'm not afraid of you. Come on, I'm not afraid of you. Come on, show yourself. almost caught me, but I ran like the wind. I lost those terrible footsteps and I kept running. I had to find some place where she couldn't come after me. I saw a cheap hotel. I got myself a room, raced up the stairs and slammed the door shut. I sat on the bed, panting, waiting, listening. I didn't have long to wait. Off the 
All right, man. Come and get him. Dad, come and set up the stairs. Dad, come and set up the stairs. Subconscious mind to speak freely. You've probably heard of it. No, sir. Something is buried in your subconscious. Something so deep, so terrible that your conscious mind refuses to face it. But once that something is out of the open, would it? Would I be cured, Doctor? You can try. You can only try. Shall I use the drug? 
I... Up to you. It's harmless. You've lost nothing if it fails. I... Yes, yes, yes. Use it. Use it anything. Anything that will give me a minute. Please. Lie down here on the couch. Pull up your sleeve. This won't hurt. Oh. That's all. Now, Martin, the drug is taking effect. I want you to begin counting backwards from 100. What? Count backwards. 100. 99. 100. 99. 98. 97. <laughs> Counting, Martin. 72, 71, 72, 73, no, no, 71, 70, 69. About the 50th, you've written not one soul. Why don't you get an honest job so we can eat? Oh, this one's a little different. I thought you might like it. Well, you thought wrong. I don't want to hear any of your stories. You understand? Not a single one. All right, you don't have to. You need a watchman at the foundry and you write stories. Isn't it about time you did some work? Helena, you know. Other women have decent clothes. Other women go out once in a while. Other women enjoy life. But me, oh no. I stay home, I slave in a hot kitchen and grow old before my time. I sit and listen to your stupid story. Please, Helen, let's not have another argument. Oh, and please, let's not have another argument. I suppose you'd rather be out with those lovely friends of yours popping whiskey down your throat. I suppose you'd rather be listening to them telling you how wonderful you are, how wonderful that junk you turn out is. Helen, I've warned you never to talk about my writing. Writing, you good. You call that stuff Helen. writing stuff? Telling me. You and your phony sniveling. You've lost every job you had because you thought decent work was beneath you. Helen, I, I've taken just about enough. Oh, you have. That's all I'm going to. I'm clearing out of here. Your what? Uh, the furniture's yours. You can make the last few payments. Oh, I can, can I? Maybe you'll leave some of your precious stories to pay them with. And the grocer, and the clothes. Helen, I'm and through that's... talking. I'm leaving you and I want a divorce. I want a divorce. Oh, you do. I suppose you'll find somebody new and tell her what a great writer you are. Tell her how she'd live like a queen from your magnificent, creative talent. Helen, when you talk like that, I... You want a divorce. Oh, you're funny, Martin. Really funny. You want a divorce. I'm the one who wants a divorce. I'm the one. And you'll pay for it, Martin. You'll pay plenty. Martin. Yes, Doctor. How did your wife die? We we were divorced. I don't know. You know. I left her. The days passed. I don't know. How did she die? You know. She she died. She came alive again. How did she die? Uh, <laughs> no one will ever know. It was too clever. Much too clever for anyone to ever know. She said I had no creative talent. Didn't you, Helen? Helen, I'm speaking to you. Oh, stop it, Martin. You've been drinking. Huh? Only two? A little celebration. And tonight's an anniversary. Tonight, we're divorced six months. Tonight, we're six months apart. Stop it, Martin, and listen. I only ask you here because the alimony is overdue again. I've got to have money for the rent. Oh. Is this the Helen I knew asking for money? How can you lower yourself to such a level, my dear? Martin, this isn't time for one of your jokes. The landlord's been in to see me twice. Oh, my heart, please. This is the fourth time I've had to be late with a rent. I promised to pay him by morning. Oh, did you? I can't go on like this much longer. I'm getting sick. 
You don't seem to understand. I haven't any money. And you don't seem to understand that I don't care. Well, you've got to care. The money's due me. I want it. You'll get it when it's good and ready. Well, you can't do this. You can't. Uh, we'll see whether I can. Well, now, Unavailable when she was sick. Out of town when she was desperate. I let her dangle to the end of a rope. Martin, I'm seriously ill. I owe everyone in town. Now, I've had all I'm going to take from you. I'm putting a stop to it. Oh, really? You've been selling your story. You have money now. I've got to have my hair. And if I don't have it first thing in the morning, you'll be in court this time tomorrow night. Sweetly said, my dear. But believe me, we shall never meet in court. Tonight we leave each other with an even greater finality than before. We'll see about that. <laughs> That's right, we will. Tonight, my dear Helen, tonight you're going to commit suicide. Oh, Martin, you're drunk. <laughs> Am I? You think you can frighten me? You're going to commit suicide, Helen. That's why I suggested we come here to the kitchen. You're talking like a fool. Yeah, you think so? I assure you, I've planned this for months. If this is another one of your jokes. For months. It was easy to see the divorce would never be enough to rid me of you. I asked myself over and over, how can I get rid of Helen without being hung for it? How can I get rid of her? Martin. I tell you, it was quite a problem until I came across this object in the store. You know what this object is, Helen? Oh, gas mask. Yeah, I guess. An army all-purpose gas mask with red canister. Excludes carbon monoxide, Helen. All right, Martin. We're ready to talk. Why did the detective arrest you, Martin? Why? Why did the detective arrest you? I went crazy in the hotel room. I pounded on the walls. I broke the furniture. I screamed out the window. Why did you go crazy, Martin? She came there to the hotel room. Helen came to the room. She was dead. I saw her die. But she came to the hotel room and talked at me. She's dead, but she's talked at me. Tell me just how it happened, Martin. It wasn't the first time. She followed me everywhere. Tell me just how it happened, Martin. From the first time. First time it happened, I was in a restaurant with Judy. Sweet, lovable Judy. We had a corner table near the bar. Soft, secluded, low light. I held Judy's hand and we talked wonderful nonsense. Judy, we'll be married. Live near a wide, lazy river. We'll be married. We'd just become engaged. Oh, well, we love each other. Why should we wait? So I can get to know you better. You know me. I'm Martin. I came from a dark, horrible place where people hated each other. And I came into a light place where I found you. Martin. You will marry me right away, won't you, Judy? I'll... What's the matter, Martin? What's the matter? That woman sitting at the bar. Huh? That woman. That's Helen. Huh? Helen. It's Helen, but it can't be. It can't be. What are you talking about? Helen, she's come back to life again. She's dead, but she's come back to life. Stop it. Stop it. You'll have to be quiet. Helen. Helen, wait. I'll have to ask you to leave. She's gone. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. Helen. 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 Martin. Yes, sir. Who is Helen? Helen is dead. Who is Helen? Helen was my wife. She's dead. How did she die? She died and came back to life. I saw her. How did she die, Martin? 
I don't know. You know. How did she die? I don't know. She was your wife. You must know. I hated her. She nagged. I hated her. Ellen? Yes, Martin. I finished another story. You want to hear it? Oh, you and your story. The Pocketbook Mystery. Now, in the quiet hours of the night, the lamplit library waits. The book lies open on the table. And out of the book, all things are possible. Love and hate and adventure. Greed and infinite terror. And mystery. Now is the moment of escape for imagination. The instant of release into the other world where anything can happen. Now the book lies open on the table. Tonight, the book is The Circular Staircase by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Miss Reinhardt. Yes? Who was led down the circular staircase? One man with two minds. One crazed by fear, the other sealed by terror. One desperate, the other tortured. One man with two minds in tonight's story... The Circular Staircase. The Pocketbook Mysteries, a new cycle of plays based on the 2,000 volumes of the Pocketbook Library. A dramatic cycle of suspense, action, and mystery, taken from the writings of Hemingway, of Reinhardt, of Dostoevsky, of James Cain, William Irish, Dashiell Hammett, of all the great storytellers who write for the readers of Pocket Books. Miss Reinhardt, are you ready? I'm ready. Miss Mary Roberts Reinhardt, beginning the story which she calls The Circular Staircase. winding circular staircase, their steps ringing dull on the iron coil rung. The two white jacketed attendants hold his arm. The detective walks in front. They go down the staircase, down the chlorine smelling corridor. They enter the office where the black lettering reads, Dr. Corman. They stand there waiting. The doctor looks up to 